Welcome back to another how-to video brought to you by ODI Grips and our BMX. I'm Demarcus Paul and I'm going to teach you how to do a half cap. If you don't know how to do a 180 and roll out, you probably shouldn't really focus on learning how to do a half cap. I think it'll come naturally, but that's pretty much like the first thing you want to have out of the way. If you're pretty comfortable with rolling out, um, you do it often. Uh, you you kind of like not necessarily mastered it on everything you tried on, but I feel like from there, then you can move forward. After learning it on flat was the first step for me, and from there you can take it onto a curb, down a stair set, up a stair set, over a rock, over anything laying around, even a skateboard, um, over caution tape, whatever it may be. I find it to be easier to get into a half cab if I over rotate the 180, therefore lining me up to have the momentum I need to continue the turn so it helps me with the half cab. As opposed to if I do a half do a 180 and I land completely faking, going straight, if I pull from this position, the half cab is a little more drawn out, which for making it a little bit more difficult to get all the way around. I feel like those both are kind of like the same. I do personally feel it's harder for me to half cab after a long faking. And to some people, it may be a little bit more comfortable doing it that way. But for myself, the longer I fake it, the more I anticipate doing a half cab, the more distracted I get, and the harder it makes to half cab, if that makes any sense. Another key thing that I find it help be helpful when doing a, a half cab is to, when I do create the, uh, the carve and have the torque to push myself around, I follow through with my head. So if I turn my body and turn my shoulders. I want, I want the head to follow, so it pushes me all the way around. Because if you, if you lag your arms, your shoulders, your head, it kind of makes the whole process a little bit more drawn out or more like sluggish to a degree. And it just makes it like uh, when you turn your head, it just makes it a little bit more fluent. I feel like timing has a, a real big role in being able to have a fluent and consistent half cap. Some people prefer, like Ethan Corrier, he's, he can sit down, I believe, for a whole mile and do a, a really sit half cab. But myself, um, I have to weigh maybe a bike length before the object then I feel a little bit more comfortable doing it. Or I feel more consistent actually making it up the stair set, down a stair set, or even over something. I strongly believe if you can half cab off a curb um, and even up a curb, I think like the timing is always like, we'll still be consistent with it. Um, the only difference is if, it, if there's a distance, you have to go a little bit faster to make up for the, the lack of speed you may have to clear the stair set going down or the stair set going up. But generally, it still is the same concept. Uh, do know that the longer the stair set or the longer the gap um, or the distance that you're trying to travel, it's going to be a little bit harder to clear it if you're going slow. But um, if you're going at the right speed, you have to kind of slow down doing the half cab because if you go really fast and you turn a little too hard, way too fast, you're going to over rotate. I feel that that's a common thing that happens when it comes to going down stair sets and sometimes it can kind of like push you into a full cab and that's not what we're talking about here. So just doing a half cab, we're going to stick to that right now. Sometimes when doing a half cab, you can, um, you can pull too hard, which can cause you to like eject off the bike and that happens often whether it's like going down a stair set or over a flat gap. When approaching a stair set going down as opposed to going up, I try to be a little less aggressive on pulling and I just try to time it pretty much the same. Um, when I go up, I try to be a little more aggressive with the hop and tucking the bike. It is a little, it is a little more scary going up than going down depending on the setup, but they both require to me the same exact timing. Pretty much like anything that you do on a bike or anything you're trying to learn, it comes with time. Uh, the more and more you try, the more and more you'll figure out about it. And some days it will feel like you're not even learning, but just keep on trying it. Um, sometimes try it a different way. The other way may work better for you. Um, but in the meantime, if you have any questions or if you even like this how-to, and even if you feel I left something out that you may have practiced when learning how to half cap, uh, 
leave it in the comments or hit me up in my DM and yeah, I'll just keep on riding. Shout out to ODI Grips and RBMX for these how-tos. Um, if you have any suggestions or any other ideas on how-tos that I should try to cover or do, feel free to let me know.